Hi, it's Matt Engadji, and today we're taking a look at the Sony Xperia Z. This is Sony's new Android flagship, and it has this sumptuous 5-inch 1080p display. More than that, it even includes Sony's new mobile Bravia Engine 2. Um, we'll take a quick tour here because you've really got to see this phone to believe it. It's a very good-looking slice of Android. It's um, probably the best-looking phone we've ever seen from Sony. Um, the whole thing is actually uniform in width. And we'll take a quick look at the side later, but um, Sony are t calling this design um, Omnibalance, and it's the same design you'll see in their new tablet. It's very, very thin, and uh, the only detail along the edges, thanks to some covering flaps, is that uh, power button and the volume switch. They're both made of uh, machined aluminium, and uh, the power switch actually just sticks out a little bit. Now, taking a closer look at the rest of the phone, um, the screen again dominates, as it most likely would. But the phone is actually very nice and light. Um, this is obviously the white mirrored finish. It also comes in a black and a purple offering. Now, like the Xperia T that came before it, you'll get the same trio of on-screen buttons. You've got the multitasker there, the home button, and the back button. Just below that, the only other thing you'll find there is the mic, which actually matches the design of the earpiece there. And also there, you have a 2 megapixel Exmor R sensor. And that's paired with a, a 13 megapixel Exmor RS sensor, a new one with a flash and a secondary mic. Now there's nothing really else on that backing, it's just a lovely shimmery slice of plastic. It's a bit fingerprint hungry, but again, it's a very good looking phone. It's very well designed, um, if a little bit sharp at the corners. We found if we were holding it for extended moments of time, those um, tricky corners did start to kind of dig into our palm, and that's something to be at least um, aware of. But fortunately, thanks to that uh, 79 millimeter thickness, it slid into our pockets on jackets and trousers with uh, no issue whatsoever. You also find a little lanyard there on the bottom left corner. And then next to that, you'll see the single loudspeaker. Unfortunately, it's not actually all that strong. Um, while there's NFC tech here, so you'll be able to pair it with Sony's um, NFC capable speakers, we we're hoping it had a little bit more oomph. I mean, Sony do a lot of audio equipment, so that's a bit of a disappointment. Again, next to that, you'll have the two switches that we mentioned before, and then one of the first um, waterproof uh, flaps here to access it. There's actually a rubber seal on the on that flap there, and beneath that one, you'll get access to the micro SIM. On the top here, you've got the headphone socket. We'll take a little bit of, of a closer look here. Now, fortunately, the, both all these flaps you'll find along the device are actually comfortably sturdy. You can actually probably hold the weight of the phone on the flaps, although we wouldn't really advise doing that. On the uh, left edge, you'll find two more. One that you'll have to access a fair bit is the micro USB port. And then next to that, you've got the uh, micro SD card slot. That expands uh, the storage available up to 32 gigs. That is obviously in addition to the 16 gigabytes of storage that's already housed within the device. Alongside that storage, you actually get two gigabytes of RAM and the Snapdragon S4 Pro processor. Now this one is clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. It's a quad core beast. And yeah, as we played with the phone, we found uh, we didn't lack any power. Um, it's a very capable phone, comparable in performance to the Optimus G or the Nexus 4, despite the higher resolution screen. So why the lack of open ports and why those uh, flaps we just saw earlier? Well, that's because the phone is actually water resistant. It can actually be submerged for around 30 minutes. And obviously we're just giving you a quick test here. Hopefully we just pressed our power button and there we are, it still works. The touchscreen is still fully functional. Uh, you won't be able to use that uh, touch display while in the water. In fact, it gets a bit screwy and starts hopping all over the place. Alongside that, you'll also find um, dust resistance certified to IPX5, which is nice to see. But given that you need to open and close the flap to access the micro USB charging port, we think Sony's missed a trick by not including any contactless charging here. We've already seen it on the HTC Droid DNA, which also has a 1080p 5-inch screen. And we've also seen it on the likes of the Lumia 920 and the Nexus 4, which is at a considerable lower cost. As we note in the full review, uh, the viewing angles here aren't the greatest we've seen. But one, one place where it does shine is um, when you're viewing your own photos on the 1080p display. Now, as you can see here, the colors are really rich and dense, where, and that's where the mobile Bravia engine is actually kicking in. It's actually augmenting those colors, improving sharpness, and actually reducing noise to make your pictures look actually, well hopefully, better than they are in real life. Um, you, actually, you can actually see how vibrant it turns those oranges when, when uh, we opened that there. And fortunately you can even turn off the mobile uh, Bravia engine if you feel it's a bit overdone, which is a nice thing to see. Again, the screen is very responsive thanks to the S4 Pro processor 
and largely uh, we had no troubles uh, viewing all the media we'd recorded with the camera. Let's move into that camera because uh, Sony has refreshed its uh, UI here. It'll look familiar to anyone that's used an Xperia phone before, but there's a few more licks that it's taken from the Sony's imaging range. There's a few familiar, familiar icons here. Now, if you take a closer look at the menu here, uh, the resolutions available to you include 12 megapixels, 9, and a few more below that. We generally stuck to the 9 megapixel one to make the most of the screen viewing experience there. Um, you also get to choose how you focus here. Now, we're actually playing with the uh, normal camera setting. Now more notable than even the HDR video mode found on Xperia Z is this new Auto I Plus mode. Now the crux of it here is the phone actually attempts to set um, focus, uh, ISO and even HDR depending on the situation. You'll see here it focuses on the macro option when we've got this uh, close up object. Um, and it does a very good job of uh, ensuring uh, settings are optimized for things like motion blur, low lighting, um, differences in white balance lighting and things like that. In fact, we often en ended up just using the uh, auto setting um, without having to tinker with those uh, laborious menus. And if you can't be doing with the lights of uh, ISO and white balance, you might find the Auto I Plus is a setting you'll use a whole lot. Now diving into the phone, it runs on Android 4.1.2. So unfortunately, it's not the very latest version of Jelly Bean but it still has that distinctive Sony Xperia Android tang to it. Things like the uh, Rolodex Gallery are still here, although these um, odd widgets at the top here are kind of a frustration more than a convenience. The one on the left of that setting bar there actually turns off data, and we've accidentally done that several times in the process of reviewing the phone. Something else we'd like to touch on is the new stamina mode uh, inside the power management settings. The idea is to increase the battery life of the device by limiting apps that are able to access data when the screen's turned off. Unfortunately, we didn't find it made a major impact on battery use or extending what is unfortunately a pretty uh, miserable sub six hour battery life. According to the power logs, it seems it's more the screen that it's sucking up um, battery power rather than any specific app. Now moving on to Sony's entertainment hub, this covers music and movies. We've jumped into the uh, movie icon here and it's a place to draw together not only your own movie files and a few demo ones, but also access to Video Unlimited, Sony's um, video store that you can also access on the PlayStation, PC, and other Sony devices. Uh, it's very, very, very easy to pick up new titles uh, alongside rentals. You can actually purchase the films. Now, unfortunately, all the ones we've um, discovered while browsing the store have been in standard definition. There's nothing, yeah, at least yet, to offer full high definition playback. Next up, we've got the uh, Walkman app. It is a very capable uh, MP3 player. These are a few of the demo tracks that come with the phone. Um, but you'll also gain access to Music Unlimited. Like Spotify, there's a premium subscription offer ties around a £10 per month payment to unlimited uh, offline plays. There's a few curated lists, and you can also just search by artist, album, and the rest of it. There's plenty of music here, but uh, if you're already um, running Spotify, there's not actually that much here to convince you to change your ways. Now, not only is the Xperia Z a very good looking, solidly built phone, but it's also got the kind of specs you'd really want to see in a phone. A very high resolution camera with its own tricks, um, built in storage plus uh, micro SD expansion and a processor that's the best currently available on the market. Um, but there's some drawbacks and there's issues and complaints that make it perhaps not the standout flagship smartphone that Sony hoped it would be. For one thing, uh, the screen is uh, meant to be one of the strengths of the handset, and while, while, while viewing it straight on, it looks very good. Turn it slightly to the side, and you'll see it start to grey out, and colours and contrasts start to melt away. Uh, we've played with it up against uh, the HTC Butterfly with its own 1080p display, and it just doesn't stand up to it. Xperia Z will launch in the first week of March here in the UK, priced at around £525, that's around $815. Check out our full review at Engadget.com. Thanks for watching.